Welcome back to Pancras, Legends of Mixed Martial Arts, seen only here on Imagination TV. We're getting ready to see our next fight, Ryushi and Nagasawa versus Guy Mezger. Now, Josh, we saw Guy Mezger uh, a week or two ago, a loss to Funaki, looking to rebound from that. Yeah, Funaki is, as one of the aces of the company, no, no uh, real shame in losing to a guy like that. But Yanagi Sawa is no slouch himself. Uh, Yanagi Sawa is going to have the, the reach advantage. He's also going to have the size advantage. And he comes from a karate background, uh, similar to Guy with his kickboxing and karate background. Uh, we'll see how that matches up. And maybe the real defining uh, moment will be who can make the most advantage of the groundwork. And let's see if the size advantage pays off for Yanagi Sawa. Guy Metzger versus Ryushi Yanagi Sawa. As we see both fighters shaking hands now, Guy Mezger, a world-class kickboxer. So you might want to use those kicks early in the fight. And uh, Yanagi Sao would eventually go on to even compete in K1 uh, after training lengthily with uh, Team Dragon, a, a very uh, successful and, and kickboxing team within Japan. So that should give you an idea how good uh, Yanagi Sao is on his feet as he eats a, a high left snap kick. And both fighters trying, keeping the fight uh, on their feet, at least for right now. And Mezger now perhaps looking for the takedown. Right, nice arm drag to uh, tight waist and a takedown, tight waist takedown by Mezger and getting the back control position. That high, that front lead leg high kick is actually a staple of Mezger's and one of his uh, signature moves. He's scored a lot of success with that. Now, Yanagisawa is down on the mat, but not necessarily a bad thing because Guy Mezger, he's got some of the best knees in the business, but he can't use that when he's on the mat. Back again on the feet here is Yanagisawa and Mezger. Yanagisawa opening up with some palm strikes and a, uh, ending with a middle kick. Mezger leading off with a left-right kick. I'll tell you what, Yanagisawa's, uh, he, so far he looks content to trade kicks. I'm not sure that's the best thing to do with Guy Mezger. Well, Guy's certainly going to have the more speed and, and able to throw the more uh, tricky, sort of unorthodox kicks, but Yanagisawa, I'd expect, would have the power advantage. And being a southpaw, maybe a little more of a difficulty for Guy Mezger to adapt. And Mezger showing he's got some palm strikes, too. Got to keep those hands high, though. His hands are starting to fade low, and, and uh, that could cost him if, uh, if Yanagi Sawa comes in hard with the palm strikes or another high head kick. Now, if you're Yanagi Sawa, I'm curious, don't you want to take this fight to the ground? I think at some point it would be smart for Yanagi Sawa to, to initiate a takedown and get on top of Mezger, at least for some, some amount of time. Nice, nice kick by Yanagi Sawa with a return by Mezger and with uh, a back spin kick. I think Yanagi Sawa got the memo, a couple knees, and now he's going for the takedown. Certainly, uh, Mezger going for the rolling knee bar, but blocked by Yanagisawa. Yanagisawa now taking advantage of that top position we talked about uh, earlier and uh, trying to work the neck of Mezger and put his weight on him. As we move ahead in the fight, it looks like Mezger is going for an arm bar and uh, Yanagisawa slipped out. How did he slip out, Josh? Uh, just uh, not, wasn't able to really secure it as well as he should have, and Yanagisawa being the the seasoned veteran was able to see it coming and already make preparations to escape. Now Mezger trying to apply a chokehold on Yanagasawa. Yanagasawa, as we've seen before in the past, prone to that chokehold. Nice front, front, uh, front choke attempt by Mezger. Yanagasawa has his hands inside uh, to defend against it, but uh, Mezger applying pressure, a turning lot into of a pressure. neck crank. What, what, is, what should Yanagasawa do at this point? And he just ate a knee to the body. Well, he was defending and trying to break the grip, but now he's in a bad spot in the tie clinch, eating knees to the body. So what are you do? And returning in kind with some body punches of his own. I'm not sure trading knees is Yanagasawa's best play, though. Right, knees, knees for punches is not really a, a, a game you're likely to win. That's almost like knife to a gunfight. But uh, so far, Yanagasawa is still in the fight, visibly exhausted, as is Mezger as they continue on with their striking battle on the feet. And as far as conditioning goes, which fighter do you give the advantage to? I think both of them are in excellent physical shape, but it looks to me as Yanagi Sao is a little more spent of the two of them. And that might have been from spending more time on bottom against Mezger. Once again, this fight on the ground. Mezger with a front choke. But Yanagisawa is near, is near the ropes, so should he have to grab it, he probably will do so. Mezger working the neck, uh, front headlock position, controlling, controlling. Uh, maybe looking for the choke or the neck lock again. Again, 
cinching tight on that front neck. Looks like a maybe a front face lock. And time expires. And it looks like Ryushi and Nagasawa saved by the bell. And our next fight's gonna feature Yoshiki Takahashi against Scott Bisak. Now Scott Bisak lost his first four fights, but since then has won his last four. So this isn't the same Scott Bisak we saw weeks ago. Right. Scott Bisak is gonna be giving away uh, experience to a guy like Takahashi, uh, but Coming in on a four-fight winning streak has to do a lot for his confidence, and maybe he can take some of that momentum and roll it into a fight where uh, he's giving up uh, experience and probably looked at as the underdog against someone like Takahashi, regardless of being the bigger man. And I like to call Takahashi Mr. Boku Boku, which in Japanese means hot-headed. Uh, he, he really loves up to that expectation, too. Josh Barnett, a linguist, ladies and gentlemen. Cunning uh, linguist. All right, and cunningly good-looking linguist. <laughs> All right, let's go to Scott Bisak versus Yoshiki Takahashi. Scott Bisak versus Yoshiki Takahashi. Now, as you take a look at the fighters, uh, Scott Bisak has a tremendous physical advantage, 6'4", to Takahashi's 5'11", and, Ta and Bisak weighs about 245. I think Takahashi, though, is going to be able to neutralize this with a strong double leg takedown and his very fast and aggressive palm strikes. Bisak, nice, aggressive right palm strike. He is kept going on the offensive, knocks Takahashi down to the mat. Yeah, Bisak just, just really going off on Takahashi here. I don't know what's gotten into him, but it's like he's a, a different man from the fights that we saw earlier. And we just saw Scott Bisak uh, deliver palm strikes to Takahashi while Takahashi was on the ground. I guess he heard that, hey, if his opponent does it, he might as well start it first. I think this fight is going to be one that's going to get a little wild, if anything. Both fighters on the ground, perhaps trying to catch their breath after the furious start to this fight. Bisak looking for that uh, double wrist lock there on top. And Takahashi shooting a couple right leg kicks. Bisak returning that left leg kick. You got to wonder how much, how long Bisak's going to be able to keep this pace up being the bigger man. A much bigger man, weighing 245. Takahashi just around 200. Big right palm strike from Bisak. Takahashi, nice big looping left hook palm strike. And more palm strikes from Bisak. Takahashi able to block a good amount of them, but still some of that's getting through and that's going to take its toll. Scott Bisak showing he is not intimidated, delivering blows to Takahashi and now backing him into a corner. Takahashi just getting hit by knees and slaps, but Takahashi returns the favor. A left-right palm strike combination takes Bisak down. Bisak looked in control, but Josh What a turnaround. Takahashi is explosive. He can come out and can't even make the can't make the count is Bisak. What a what a return on Takahashi's part. He opened up and he scores heavy and puts him down. 122, actually, correct me, to correct that, 226 in the first round. And it looks like Scott Bisak dominated probably about two minutes out of the 226 of the match. But those last 26 seconds or so, as we see here on the replay, ferocious right palm strikes. Bisak goes down and never gets back up, Josh. Left, right, and Bisak is down and out for the count. And I think Bisak was really caught unaware as a I'm sure he had, he'd been hit a few times by Takahashi, but uh, he had so much momentum in this fight. He was controlling and, and landing at will, and all of a sudden, just bam, out of nowhere. It, it just caught him right flush, and that was the end of that. And Scott Bisak uh, has to be a little disappointed, Josh. He dominated 80, maybe even 90% of this fight, but just that one little slip, Takahashi, all it took was a left-right palm strike to knock Bisak True, out. True, and I'm very familiar with Takahashi's ability to hurt somebody, and the fact that my nose curves a little bit to one side is, is handiwork of Mr. Takahashi, friend of mine, but uh, if he's... Even after the nose. Even after it? the nose, and uh, I, I actually uh, about broke his arm in return, but... So it all evens out. It, it all evens out, but uh, he, he's a hellacious puncher, and he's got a lot of velocity on those things. All right, and after the break, we're going to watch someone else that is a great puncher. Minoru Suzuki is in action. Stay tuned.